Meeting to order the April 11th regular school board meeting. Roll call looks like all the board is present. So, first up on the agenda is the approval of the April 4th, 2024 minutes. Move to approve the April, 20, uh, April 4th, 2024 minutes. I have a motion to approve the April 4th, 2024 minutes. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up, we've got some staff recognition. I guess this was at your suggestion last month, and I think we need to make this a monthly thing. And uh, we have uh, Coach Lincoln and Coach Quarter, Coach Staller. I don't know if Coach Brandon is here. He's not here tonight. And uh, that was a suggestion to recognize the coaching staff for their outstanding season. So, uh, Mr. Hughes, did you want to say anything? Because this was your suggestion uh, last month. Miss, it was Miss Jernigan, but I, I piggybacked off of okay. it. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, obviously, super, super proud of y'all. Um, there's been a uh, ha had a, had a bit of a stretch since, since we had such a good run like that, but um, obviously you guys are leading those young men, doing a phenomenal job, and the, the whole community is super super proud of y'all. Yeah. And so to further that, y'all got to come up here and get that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just what you want to do, Miss. Yes, yeah, so going to take a picture. Okay. Lee will take a picture. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. I don't know. We need to hold yours. Can you grab it? I'll grab it. I'll hold it for a minute. Y'all be okay. Smile pretty. Good for yourself. You get it. Coach Lincoln was 5A, 5A coach west of the year, and we also were fortunate enough to have a player who was. Uh, Yes, Ezra Towns Robinson was an uh, all 5A All State player. I mean, a 5A West uh, player of year um, this year. As a junior, he got um, eight of the nine votes first place, so he won a pass. So, wow. Uh, I'm going to probably ask principals each month and uh, get uh, updates on staff accomplishments. We'll try to do this on a regular basis. Sounds good. Thank you, Caleb. Okay. All right, next up we've got facilities update. Craig Boone, Alan Ware. Uh, the, the activity building is, you know, we're basically about 99% complete with it. All the finishes are up with the painters going through doing his final touch up right now. The HVAC systems are functional, uh, sprinkler system, uh, basically everything's done. There are a few odds and ends like you look up there and there's 144 lights and one of them looks like a different color of bulb. It's kind of an uh, error when they shift them. So, But when it's at 50 foot in the air, it can be an issue. You know? so we're taking care of stuff like that. Uh, we are not still not doing the driveway uh, into the back of the activity due to the, activity, uh, due to the work that will be required for the turf. And we're not doing the asphalt. We are working on the concrete paving. Uh, there's a little bit of stuff that was added up by the transformer area um, that we have to get done and then back our way out. So uh, still working on that. But uh, other than that, it's really close to being ready for uh, uh, inspection. And we've actually scheduled the final walkthrough punch list for two weeks, about two weeks from today, something like that. Right. Uh, the VOAG building's in the, it's, it's the same, and actually, I think the painter started his final touch-up uh, on it first and was kind of circling through it. He may be in the lower level now. Uh, there's, there's also um, uh, the weight room. We are not going to put the floor in it until after the turf's down because it's just, it's a, sort of a sensitive type floor to mud and dirt and uh, just and we've got an electrical room at the back of that weight room that you have to they have to get to for various things and just uh, Travis and, and uh, Dow 
my superintendent got together and said, no, let's don't put it in, you know, so. Uh, I think that's about, uh, that's about all I had uh, for your updates. Thank you. Anybody got any questions? How long till everything's done, done, done? Well. I just done, 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 done. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Um, you know, basically we got a little bit of concrete and asphalt to do after the turf. So um, if the turf, let's just say it takes a month, uh, we're probably looking at sometime into June and everything's done, you know, just guessing real fast. Although there's not a turf schedule yet, sure. Yeah. But I mean, all everything looks like by school year next year. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Write it down. <laughs> hey, write it down. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Mr. Boone. Anything? Really nothing okay. to add. Other than, like I said, we're about two weeks off of doing the punch. So I'll bring the staff over. I've got the electrician or electrical engineer, mechanical engineers, all set to come down to do their final walkthrough, check the systems any items there usually what items we come back in are, are, are wrapped up within a week two weeks uh, so we should be rolling out great thank you all if you'd stick around for one second for the next topic for the tarp just in case yes. i may have some questions that go with that thank you all right so next up on the agenda are the turf bids i guess it's on page four of your packet and uh we uh, facilitated bids mr bob <coughs> aldrich facilitated that for us uh, he, and you received the specs by email, but he's here to answer any questions you may have about installation or timeline on that part of the project before I make a recommendation to you. So the question I have, kind of for all three of you, um, I know we got three bids, one was significantly less, but it's also the turf only, and I read through the bid specs and they're enormous. but Just you know, basically a yes or no, is the difference between the the low bid, which is not a complete bid, and the low bid that is, is the base work something that we could do for the difference ourselves and save any money? No. Okay. That was my question, that in case they had any input with it. So, okay. okay. Any other additional information you want to share on the bids? Uh, yeah, we got great pricing. I'm very, very pleased with what the pricing is. <coughs> Significantly under the engineer's estimate, our estimate. Um, Hellas Construction, Dal uh, perfect, the turf provider for the Dallas Cowboys, Houston Texans, um, Las Vegas Raiders. They have multiple um, NFL facilities. They have college, junior college, high school, junior highs all over the country. They're a huge construction company. Um, very happy with the product. Uh, they're meeting, they're exceeding our specifications and their construction schedule was the best one that we received of all of them. Currently, they're saying when they, they, they hit the ground running, they should be able to turn it over in 18 days. Where are they based out of? Uh, they're in the Austin area. And that includes the base work, perhaps? Yes. Every, yeah, yes. every night. Oh, that's, that's, that's what they said that remains to be seen. Regardless, it, it's, it's very feasible to be done in 21 to, to 28 days. Sure. I'll well, add the other ones were like 44 to 50 days, even though the bids are better, but Hellas was, was significantly quicker just because they're a larger number. Mm -hmm. Well, Hellas will be the low bid for the complete project. Yes, That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, the best of both worlds. Yes. And I would say personally, I'm very, very confident with the, the product itself. I mean, it's great. Very I'm happy with the <coughs> low bid, I'm saying. What's the, what's the life of this term? It will have an eight-year warranty with it. Um, this being an indoor facility, you don't, you're not exposed to the UV light, which is the enemy of all artificial turfs. Uh, realistically, I think that you could get 10 to 12 years out of it. The indoor facility at Southside High School in Fort Smith, I, I believe is 14 or 15 years old, and it's time to replace it, but that is another example. This is a, it is a similar specification what this one is and it had the eight year warranty and it's about twice that now so dr w is this something approving a bid are we going to talk about 
the way we pay for it yes separately next yes okay. that's correct I just wanted to make sure that's correct on on that if I could point out real quick on the discussion of the, them not doing the base yes uh, you're gonna run into a warranty issue with the, the turf itself if they did not do the base okay. all of a sudden they have a failure they're gonna blame it straight on the base and it's gonna be an argument to whatever wins that's a very relevant topic. I appreciate you bringing that up. I did, the difference was so great. Of, of course, that base work, just reading the specs of, you know, everything lays level to a quarter or an eighth or something and mm -hmm. compacted, and that's a that's not as easy as it sounds in a building with walls on four right. sides. No, it, it's a very specialized procedure. Yeah. There was a gentleman um, in Van Buren that, that we built. I was part of the team that built your outdoor field um, on your stadium field. Um, and, Legacy Links is his company. He still has his equipment, but he's no longer in the business. Um, the rest of the turf companies, including Hellas, are bringing in specialists that do nothing but that. They have the right equipment, the laser graders, and so forth. It sounds like it's something that anybody can go out and do, but it's, you're better off. This is a great price. Um, if we tried to do it separately, we don't have anybody that, that can compete with, even if they would honor the warranty. It's just not worth the headache of having different contractors on different levels. Understood, we did yeah. do that, however, just for full disclosure, on your outdoor field. Brandon Black with Legacy Links built your base, and then um, Progress AstroTurf provided the Astro provided the turf itself. Okay. Thank you. One thing that sounds like handy um, is with them being a regional or nationwide company, that even when warranty work comes up, that somebody would be going down I-40 at some point to be able to come along to do any warranty work if, if it were to present itself? It is a different turf specification, but Hellas has um, the Van Buren football field is Hellas product. Um, a year after we built that field, they had a seam bust come apart. Um, as soon as Drew Cohn let us know about it, within 12 hours, Hellas had a repair crew up there fixing it because it was the middle of football season. So yes, they're very responsive. If you would like to go see a very similar product by Hellas, it's much newer. Um, Lavaca's softball and baseball field has Hellas turf on it. It's not the same specification, but it is the same company. We've worked with Hellas on other school projects, uh, mostly tracks, and they are always immediately responsive to any issues. Anytime they're somebody from regionally, you know, you worry about that standpoint as far as the responsiveness when something does happen, but um, sounds like that's not a concern. Okay. My recommendation is approve the low bid for the entire project for Hellas Construction. I make a motion to approve Hellas Construction. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Next up, second lien bond issue. Right. I've got Kevin Fought here from Stevens. And uh, so this discussion, as Mr. Rucker had presented, is looking at going forward, Thank you. Uh, paying Thank for projects you. or other initiatives going forward for our building fund. And uh, this is one of those. Uh, I had him come so that he can discuss what a second lien bond is. There is no decision I'm asking for that tonight. That way you can study it and think for the future of things we do need to do. Uh, and there's some other options as well as far as for the immediate future for more revenue for our building fund. So, Judge Fodd, if you can explain what a second lien bond is. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Um, okay, if I stand here. Um, second lien bond issues, if you're not familiar with those, they're allowed under state statute. Basically, there's no security. It's just like second lien mortgage, second mortgage, if you will. So, you have so-called surplus from your debt service mills. So you have 17.4 debt service mills. So you're generating X amount of dollars from those debt service mills. Those you use to pay your debt. If you recall, you have two bond issues outstanding. So, you have currently a surplus of about a million six um, that you're not needed needing for debt service. Um, with your growth. Dr. W, I, we don't have a new final number from the county yet, but assuming, right. I, I don't know if you all have, but your your assessments are going to go up about four and a half million roughly. Right. Right. Um, so that'll generate another sixty-five, seventy thousand dollars in additional debt service revenue. So, and I don't mean to get 
sidetracked, but that so-called surplus, now you have to be careful with second lien because typically you're using that money somewhere in the district, but right. in theory you can use that entire million six to issue debt. The only caveat is you can't go out any further than your voted bond issue, so 2055 as far as you can go out. Um, but you're allowed to issue that debt, doesn't require a vote of the people, like a millage increase would, um, but you're only limited by, you know, how much you can afford, if you will, of that million six. Uh, we looked at several options, million, million and a half, and two million. I mean, that range about, from about 62,000 for a million, 92,000 for a million and a half, and about 120,000 annually, annual debt service for those three options. Now, again, that's a moving number because interest rates are moving. I don't know if you all have seen, you know, last week or this week, what if, what if my week's messed up. Um, you know, inflation is continuing to rise, so that's not really good for interest rates. Uh, that means they're probably going to stay up where they are, if not go up a little higher maybe before they come down, but you never know. Um, if I could predict rates, I probably wouldn't be working for a living. But, um, so that's, that's one thing to consider. But, um, there are some deadlines. Um, the state only meets every other month. Um, to proceed with something like this, you have to uh, publish what's called a notice of intention. We would draft a resolution, have the board act on that, which would authorize us to publish this notice. Um, the next deadline is May 27th to get to the July um, Art of Ed meeting. So you have some time if you want to do something here in the near future. If not, you can go to the next meeting, which begins a couple months after that. So, is that, is that what you'd like yes, to cover? Yes, and uh, the, the, other, the other options also were sh uh, short-term projects or smaller projects, what's called a post-dated warrant. Would you explain what, sure. what those are? Uh, post-dated warrants um, typically are just um, checks or warrants. Um, we would put together a financing package, package, shop it to your local banks as well as all the banks that, that we deal with. I think we have a list of 50 something that we send it out to and we bid it. Um, typically on a post day warrant, you oftentimes get your local banks interested um, because you do business with them, that sort of thing, and typically that's going to drive down uh, probably an interest rate by using a local bank. Doesn't mean it'll happen that way, but the ones that I've done, that's usually how it works. So. But you set your amount, we put together a package, shop it. Um, at, at closing, the district would cut seven checks or ten checks, you can go up to ten years, um, but we cut those checks and we deposit those with the bank and each year the bank um, deposits that check, cashes that check, mm -hmm. most people. Okay. Um, and so it's typically we can set the terms, if you want to pay them off early, that's not a problem. Uh, we can set a call date, meaning um, you pay it for a certain amount of time before you're allowed to pay it off. Typically on something like this we would just let you pay off at any time. That's more of a yeah, they're typically smaller. I mean, they right. you know smaller amounts of money than the millions when yeah. you talk about those. Probably at least at least under a million, probably under five hundred thousand. That'd be probably what you would need to post state for. Right. Remember, how, how much was the original bond issue? Well, we have our our two issues. Um, Twenty two point seven eight five million was the was the uh, first one, and then we thirty five point six four five on the other. So outstanding debt, that was originally in 21. Uh, outstanding today, you have a principal of 55.17 million. Or at least as of when I did this November, I don't think I've made it to the So I don't that, but that should be correct. And that's through 2055? 2055, they are scheduled to pay on August 1, 2055. What would interest rates, I'm sorry, go ahead. Interest rates, like right now, not that we could, but where are they? Uh, I ran these numbers, I looked, um, and we were at 4.41, um, and we ran these March 8th. Uh, now, we've had some movement since then, some upticks. I mean, we had a pretty significant movement just last week. Um, that's because we were getting that inflation data that came out and said, hey, inflation's up. It was up 0.2%, I think, over last year at this time. I think it went from 3, maybe it's 0.3, 3.2 to 3.5, I believe, is what the number was. 
How does the rate compare on warrants versus second lane? Well, interestingly enough, we're in an environment where short-term rates are typically higher than long-term. Okay. Uh, I, we haven't done one of those lately, so I'd hate to guess. Sure. Um, is it, I mean, half percent, two percent? I mean, just is there a... I would suspect on a... I think you're probably closer to five percent on the warrant right now. Okay. Please don't hold no, that because we haven't done this lately. Well, it's not a three percent difference or something. Nah, it shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. What's the what's the fee difference between the bond issue and the warrant issue? Well, for, for like our, our yes. you know, I'd, I'd have to look. Um, it would it'd be it's not an appreciable difference, quite honestly. <coughs> the more you issue, the lower the percentage rate. So I, I don't have that schedule sure. in front of me. I can sure get that to Dr. Beth if you'd like to see that though. What were the rates on the original issues? Uh, interest rates on those two, um, 1% up to 5% on the, the first one, um, 2021A, and the other one was 1% to 4%. That was the range. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know, Dr. Duffy, we talked multiple times, or you and I have, and I know you mentioned it to all of us before about this was before we knew turf numbers. <coughs> uh, getting the money to pay for that out of just our current balance operating or however, however you described it best, but not borrowing right. any money is what I'm trying to say. Um, given that the bids did come in, I mean, 25% less than what we were expecting, are right. we, where do we sit if we get the turf paid for, get everything finished up? Sounds like they could obviously be done, say, July 1st, something like that, and then regroup as far as talking about warrants or second lien. Right, I What's could examine it some more, but if we want to regroup, it would probably need to be sooner than later. Okay. Uh, because I'm still projecting I need some additional revenue in the building fund uh, based on everything that I can squeeze out. But I will look at that again just to make sure uh, that we could end better than, than we project on our local contribution to the building fund. And then if there's more money, then there's less needed to try to do a bid and see even if we do a five-year issue or something with just a, a simple, small uh, post ed warrant issue, I could look at that, but I just can't make any promises we can absorb that bid totally in our operating fund. And where I'm going with that is if we could get everything finished and completed and the, the turf in and, and completed and, and paid for, then look to the future. Instead of being just super short term, we could look to the next year or two or three of what we needed. And, you don't want to borrow, if, if you do borrow anything, you don't want to borrow too little. But at the same time, sure. if we're close enough where we can pay for it and then regroup and say, all right, what do we want to do next? I know we've got the pre-K program that's going to be Yeah, that's longer term and it's definitely going to be more expensive. Yeah. For sure. And, but with that beginning in the fall and then seeing how the growth is on that um, and what the right. three to five year need would be on that. Right, I, right. I'd like so, to see that. I just wanted you to hear from him number. on yeah. this so you could think about it for the future for this bigger, bigger thing. What would be your timeline on when you'll know for sure what our ending balance yeah. building fund transfer You don't know for sure until June 30th. Okay. And I'm going to have to act sooner than that. But I can get a decent projection. Uh, our projection from early in the year is just ballpark if we bleed every budget line out of dry, and we never do. Our, our local contributions always more than what we project. Sometimes you don't know how much more, mm -hmm. you know, what bills come in and what things we need to pay. But that wouldn't affect starting the preliminary preschool program? No, that does not affect starting the, the, the possible program at primary. That's correct. I'll describe that a little later. <coughs> yes. So, uh, okay, I'll look at that and then may have a request for you later. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks bearing with me. Thanks, Mr. Paul. All right, next up, we're to our public comment period. They'll bring me the sign up. <coughs> All right, we've got five folks, so I'll go over the rules again. So, anybody desiring to address the board will sign the list provided prior to the beginning of the meeting, indicate the topping they wish to address. Each person will be limited to a maximum of three minutes with no more than 15 minutes devoted to all persons unless extended by vote of the board. Due to Federal and State Privacy Act considerations, persons addressing the board may not discuss staff members or students by name. 
Also, specific personnel situations cannot be discussed with the board. The board will take comments under advisement. Any action of the board resulting from any comments will occur at a future meeting if the issue has been properly placed on the agenda for consideration. So this is not a back and forth. You just get to make your presentations. First up, I've got Lisa Jensen. My name is Lisa Jensen. I've taught in the Alma Public School System for 34 years. I came to last Thursday's meeting to witness what the repeal of the Teacher Fair Dismissal Act looks like in action. It's nearly impossible for me to believe that a school employee that has had no disciplinary action and no improvement plan can suddenly find themselves in a position of not having their contract renewed. In addition, there is no due process allowable. What has the remaining staff most alarmed is that the 4-3 vote occurred against the recommendation of the superintendent. If I'm being honest, after listening to your comments and researching on my own, it simply feels like the singling out of one person unfairly. Some of the reasons discussed were declining enrollment, teacher turnover, and cursing. If you look at the ADA data center for the years 2019 to 2024, APS declined 87 students, AMS declined 60 students, and AIS only declined 22 students. I'm positive that some teachers left because they were unhappy. It is a misrepresentation to not acknowledge that there have been 10 maternity leaves in the past two years at AIS. Many stayed home to be with their child and others left to teach at a private school. Six out of eight English teachers have left the high school in the last two years and the same is true in math. What was that principal held accountable? And I'm very sad to say that cursing does occur on all campuses. Should we now be afraid that if that happens in our classroom we will be the next non-renewal? As far as discipline goes, I don't have enough time to list all of the things that AIS does to promote social and emotional well-being. Recently, the school board and administrators worked together to edit the student handbook. During your meetings, I heard no public discussion about discipline or death threats. Surely these topics are more important than dress code learning loss. We need you to look at that handbook again and make very clear immediate consequences for more serious behaviors for us. I do believe that you have experienced serious situations and that parents have reached out to you. The current concern is that the school board often uses a first-person narrative when speaking. Whether intentional or not, we cannot ever give the impression that action is only taken when certain students or their friends are affected. You voiced the concerns of parent complaints, but you did not acknowledge the multiple emails, texts, or calls supporting the former principal. Academically speaking, there are some valid reasons that test scores might not currently be at the level we would like. Briefly, the former princ principal was in first employed during COVID protocols. Over the next two years, new rigorous reading and math curriculums were implemented. AIS has yet to receive incoming third graders that have been instructed in the same reading curriculum, nor have they ever taken a similar state test. You will see continued growth once these things are in place thanks to the hard work at AIS. How can a principal be celebrated for raising the school's ESSA score a letter grade in October of this school year and not receive a contract in April? Um, teachers are afraid of losing their jobs. That's why I'm here. Thank you for listening, and I really do appreciate your service. Thank you, Ms. Jensen. Next up is Mike McSpadden. <coughs> Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. First, I want to express my appreciation to the Alma Superintendent for recommending last week the Alma Intermediate School principal re-employed. I want to thank the three board members who supported that recommendation with their votes. Your courage and professionalism did not go unnoticed. Six of the seven Alma School Board members are graduates of Alma High School and on many occasions have spoken very favorably about the quality of education that they received as students. It would stand to reason that they would want the current students who attend Alma to be afforded those same privileges and that by continuing many of the practices, principles, and philosophies of previous school boards they would give today's children a chance to receive the same quality education that they were given. But that does not seem to be the case. Last Thursday night, the Alma School Board, more specifically four members of the Alma School Board, made history. Their vote to overturn the employment recommendation of the Alma Superintendent was the first time in at least 60 years that the Board has overturned such a recommendation. While they and a few others may applaud this misguided and dangerous action, let's examine the results. When combined with the LEARNS Act, which removed the protections of the Arkansas Teacher Fair Dismissal Act, these four board members have now created a new standard for employment for every employee of the Alma School District. Supervisor and administrator evaluations and recommendations no longer matter. Job performance is observed on a daily basis by professionals trained in such observations no longer matter. Professionalism, dedication, competency, training and performance no longer matter. The standard for employment has gone from what you do to who you know or more specifically, who you make mad. The message is loud and clear. 
if you make a decision that one of these four school board members, their friends or their child disagree with, you will lose your job. You will be the victim of cherry-picked statistics that not only reveal the complete lack of understanding of the proper use of educational data, but last week were applied in a discriminatory manner to only one administrator. Or you could lose your job based on the I was told by someone standard, which uses rumor and unfounded accusation to fire employees. So we now live in a school district where a staff member can perform their duties at the highest level, receive excellent evaluations and recommendations from their supervisor, and still lose their job. Conversely, a staff member may perform in a less than satisfactory manner, receive poor evaluations, be recommended for non-renewal, but keep their job. The four board members who voted against the superintendent's recommendation have effectively become judge, jury, and executioner for the entire Alma faculty and staff. If this continues, high quality educators will leave the Alma School District. Parents will send their children to other schools and our entire community will suffer. Our staff, our community, and our children deserve better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McSpadden. Next up, Casey Collier. Good evening to each of you. My name is Casey Collier. I'm a lifetime resident, parent of Alma graduates, and a taxpayer of Crawford County. My husband and I have four children. Two of those have graduated from Alma, and two of them will not. They no, no longer attend Alma School District for several reasons. One, certain behaviors condoned by administration. Two, the lack of discipline. Three, teacher to student ratio. And four, the opportunity of faith-based education. I'm here tonight to say thank you. You guys were crucified last week if you voted for it or if you voted for against it. Schools are different than what they were when I went to school and when you went to school. We have to run this as a business. If I heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times this week that we all love the students. I love my kids. But there has to be discipline, there has to be expectations, there has to be policies, and there has to be repercussions. And if we're not running it like a business, we're going to fail. Love is great, and like I say, we all have to love them, but discipline is necessary. I thank you, Mr. Smith, Mr. Ewing, Mr. Hughes, Ms. Jernigan, Chapin, Shalon, and John, and Mr. Duffy. You were put in a position last week that should have never happened. This should have been handled by administration before it made it to you when you were crucified on social media. Again, I'm here to say thank you, but I'm here to say that I'm sorry that you were put in that position, and I thank you very much for what you do. Again, if you voted for it, you felt that was right, and if you voted against it, you felt that that was right. And I thank you for your time, and I thank you for serving. Thank you, Ms. Collier. Melissa Cole. <coughs> Hello, my name is Melissa Cole. My child has attended Alma School District since kindergarten with the last three years being at the intermediate, intermediate school. Unfortunately, I've experienced the same lax response and attention to bullying that was described last, last week. My daughter has been bullied and or physically assaulted every year that she's been at AIS. And each time the administration's response was dismissive and minimal. I was never notified of the physical altercations, which included my child being kicked and punched by boys in her grade, and all of which was seen by multiple witnesses and teachers. I called the office, but no one ever returned my call. The only way I knew what had happened was because of what my child had told me. It wasn't until I went up to the school that someone finally spoke to me, but they wouldn't tell me exactly what happened or provide any reassurances to protect my child or prevent something like this going forward. My daughter still constantly worries and looks over her shoulder for the boy who punched her because he's in her class and he continues to use foul language and exhibit bad behavior towards not only students, teachers, and administrators without any consequences. It's so common that it has just become the norm for their classroom. All that being said, I just want to share my experience and that say thank you to the school board for doing everything you do. Thank you for sacrificing your time. Thank you for making tough decisions and thank you for placing importance on our kids' safety while they're at school. Thank you, Ms. Cole. Next, Melissa Kohler. Last week, this board executed its business of operations by the proper method, and its members did so with much diligence. As a taxpayer of our school district and a mother of a current student, I commend you. 
As found on our district website, the school board policies of governance and operations list a duty of this board as to employ staff. And while the regular method is to approve the recommendations made by the superintendent, the board is given latitude to review the recommendations and withhold their approval through, through their votes. When deciding to comment tonight, a deciding factor was the ugly rhetoric again against Mr. Rucker and Mrs. Jernigan. Our social media has been rife with statements crying foul that the staff member whose recommendation for employment was denied was blindsided and was kept from making any statement that might defend her character and conduct. Others expressed hate over the fact that Ms. Jernigan was allowed to take part in the discussion and referred to her own child's experience. Both Mr. Rucker and Mrs. Jernigan made their statements within the parameters of the meeting rules, and it would have been easier for them to dissent without comment or explanation of their no vote. I want to publicly thank Mr. Rucker and Mrs. Jernigan for explaining their votes so that their constituents could understand why they had chosen to dissent. Their transparency is something Alma taxpayers and parents have been asking for for many years. In fact, I would have appreciated hearing from those members who voted to approve the recommendation or for them to even have asked for the staff member to make their own statement during the motion for discussion. I dissent with statements made that this makes this a popularity contest now. Rather, what the LEARNS Act and last week's vote did was ensure us that our board is listening to parents because they're elected by the people of the area, those of us paying taxes to the school district and sending our children here. I believe it's also important to make note of the poor behavior displayed by the ta staff member. Her outburst after Mr. Rucker's statement stating that she was curious if she would get to speak to his statement and being argumentative during the motion's discussion demanding clarification showed a significant lack of regard. Her poor meeting decorum showed a clear defiance and lack of professionalism that underscored the statements presented by board members. Her position in leadership assures that she has much prior knowledge of how these meetings are conducted. Also, her attendance with her family and supporters in tow made it obvious that she was prepared for the topic and possibly even for the vote. Despite this knowledge, she chose to try bullying the board to let her speak rather than to operate within the constraints of the meeting. Her behavior gave credence to the statements made about her leadership. This board is to strive to ensure that all students are challenged and are given an equitable education opportunity. I believe that last week's vote was appropriately handled to ensure the current and upcoming students of AIS will receive the opportunity in a safer and more conducive environment in the coming years. I would like to close with an urge for our board to ask our district staff to add education to our curriculum that will ensure Alma students learn how meetings are governed and obtain practical knowledge on Robert's Rules of Order. It's become obvious that many in our community are lacking education on this very important life skill. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cole. That concludes public comment. Next up is the consent agenda. No, Move to approve the consent agenda. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Consent agenda passes. Superintendent's report. Yes, we'll start with Dr. Wood. Okay. Do you have anything to report this month since it's a quick turnaround? So. <laughs> Updating this last week? Yeah. Nothing changed? Mr. Yeah. Okay. okay. I didn't think so, but I gave it work this week. <laughs> Enrollment since last uh, week? No, page uh, 27, 3065, because um, that was really for March last week. So uh, 3065 for eight. Hey, Dr. Duffy, real quick on it. While you've got yes. enrollment, I just wanted to bring something up, and I brought a copy of it that I will give you when the meeting's over. Okay. But as long as I've been here, we have tracked enrollment, and this one goes back to 1990. But we tracked enrollment, and it was kind of an arbitrary date at the beginning of the year to just get an idea of where we were. And I know the state does it. I believe it's October, October 1st. October 1 or 15. And one then of those the two. third quarter, is it the third quarter third number? Third quarter at the Which we don't have yet. Well, I've, or, yes, I've, oh, I have, you have? I reported that last time. Okay. But I've got, I tracked that. Okay. Where I'm going with this is in doing some research ahead of last week's meeting, I we stopped doing this chart in 2020, I'm sure due to COVID, and we've had obviously a superintendent change since then. But I was able to easily recreate it using the data online, using the October 1st number. What I think is interesting to this and beneficial to not only you guys, but also to board members, mm -hmm. is it shows every class size, kindergarten through 12th grade, and you can very easily look at it and track down the sheet a year ahead and a grade ahead, and right. track a class from kindergarten to first grade to second grade, all the way through. 
again, not saying that it's revealing at times, but as our we get the graph from you that's one giant number that right. it doesn't even change to register on the scale. This is a very granular and you're just updating it twice a year and it gives you uh, you know, 13 numbers a year and you've updated it right. for the next year. In saying all that, when I recreated it, just as a useful idea of where this might be beneficial is you could take certain grades and compare them from their previous year or even years ahead class sizes and come up with a number that maybe there's a trend there, maybe there's not, but maybe something to investigate. For instance, if you took the current fifth grade class and compared it to back when they were in second grade in 2021, as second graders that class size was 234. Three years later as fifth graders, that same group of kids that we mm -hmm. followed each year through is down to 216, a, a decline. Um, if you do the same thing for like the current eighth graders, in fact, you could do it for the current sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. All three <coughs> classes are above what they were in fifth grade. I just say that, that, and I'll give you a copy of this. We could, I'm sure the Excel sure. file is on one of these computers here oh, where all we have to do is update three years of it. But I found this very helpful for me. It would be something you could update October 1st. You could turn around and update with third quarter numbers. We could look, okay, we're down 100 students. Why are we down 100 students? Is it all at the high school? Is it all at one school? Is it is it wherever? Are we getting more school choice kids here or not based on total numbers instead of just this one number here? Right, and I just report that generally because yes. I could have other reports in here, but I don't know. You know, sometimes that gets. No, I understand. Some. Yeah, and I just like to say, this is something. Yes. Um, what's the What's the foundation funding for student? This This next year is seven thousand seven hundred seventy one. Per student. Per student. I just want to say it was helpful to me to be yes. able to look at something and compare classes as we as I said current third fourth fifth comparing them to their second grade numbers are down 33 students current sixth seventh and eighth compared to their fifth grade numbers are up 18. I mean that's a yeah. big difference because the report I get to just do this is a report that shows every grade level to, like for that day uh, exactly so it's very easy I, I don't know if Amy's still in here she was earlier that uh, that she can pull October 1 reports that I can fill in sure I think I know what you're talking about I've seen that but yeah I don't know where it's saved <laughs> it'll be thing. somewhere yeah, can find it, it, I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure he but can. it's uh, yeah in the October 1 this is so I compared I actually went back and compared these used to be I believe the Tuesday after Labor Day you might okay at least shaking her head yes it was Tuesday after Labor Day but they're within like two students of the right. October 1 numbers right so the, the other thing I'd offer, and uh, I think I alluded to this in the past, the State Facilities Division does a 10-year future projection of enrollment based on what's called the cohort survival method using birth rate data and some other data and trends to project for every school district in the state what they project enrollment 10 years down the line by cohort grade level. So I will, I will send that to you all too because that will be very useful for future planning as well. Sure. I'll get you a copy of this. Okay, you can have that. Look for it as well. Sure. So only a Roman piece. Somebody asked me this the other day, and uh, I guess I'm put Mr. Kirkman over here. Spot a little bit, but like the graduating class that we're about to have, what what's the size? Like how many? Two thirty-five. Two thirty-five, ish. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what I. <laughs> well, I mean, five ish. Some of us got our diploma right before we walked across the stage, but we weren't for sure. Uh, <laughs> Two thirty-five. Okay. And that's what's interesting. Yeah. That you mentioned that, Dustin, is is. There's a lot of variation in class sizes as we sit October 1st numbers. So they're going to be they're going to be different every day depending on which what is there. But the state picks October 1st. Kindergarten class is 206. First grade class is 229. And what, what was the 11th grade class? Is it's big. big. It's, it's the one like, that keeps causing us problems. Uh, what is that big? 280. Yes, I think 280. You know that's uh, which class? <laughs> today the high school student enrollment was 951. So it has to drop. We had a lot. We had a lot of students that have chosen to go Arkansas Virtual Academy. I mean, it's a lot of students. So when we lose students, a lot of times they're not necessarily moving or, I mean, they just go, the virtual is a big Yeah, I think it's what Chape is pointing out to. It's like, if we can figure out even what that, exactly that, yeah. that kind of yeah. data too, that you can extract out. I'm working on that. Like I even changed last year what we did K-8 and I've seen a lot more kids staying with us who want a virtual option and so, um, I've been looking at high school options um, to use for next year, but I'm going to tweak a little bit, which will, I hope will help us keep some kids here. Van Buren's doing kind of start. They have, a, they have a River Valley Virtual Academy. And that keeps all the 
7700 you know that keeps in the school system and we get right. to have so that like, option like this year i have probably um, today i probably have about 20 21 students who would have went virtual who are still alma students because we've offered that other option this year so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking to change not through 12 next year so we can keep some more of those students okay. yeah, that's awesome i mean that as we heard it's like a business now and with learns act next year right. bringing in i think it's full support for it's a lot easier for people to get money I don't want to say the V word of vouchers, but it's with, expanding, with sure. expanding sure. for that. I think last year I was kind of just, I switched from what we were using the year before because I wasn't crazy about the teacher option there. So the one we had this year is a lot better with the teacher, you know, having a teacher and a time to log in each day. And so I didn't advertise it real big last year because I wasn't sure if I was going to feel that it was a solid education that I do. So I want to do a little better getting that information out because kind of this year it's just been if a parent called and inquired about being virtual then I was able to tell them you could do this and still say an Alma student but hopefully get some word out for students that need that option to be able to hang on to them. Sure um, and and you talking about advertising also if we can remind everybody kindergarten registration yes and then school choice deadline coming up yes so kindergarten registration is April 18th which is, is that next week mm -hmm. April 18th. Mm -hmm. yes so kindergarten registration is that day and then May 1st is deadline for school choice yeah. Are we advertising anything? Yes. For, okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, in your packet, just because the sponsor sent these lists to me, page 28 starts our DECA and Science Fair winners in various events. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, and as we get things, if, if I have access to those lists and know about it, then I'll make sure you all know about it. So a lot of success in our marketing and business program and then uh, and I think there's even some state science fair results I don't have yet I, I think there or is there I can't remember uh, but this is regional science fair lots of awards for lots of Alma students and overall even school awards and they're competing with all sizes of schools so just wanted to bring that to your attention and again I think similar to you know bringing in coach Lincoln and the staff and all that I mean Obviously, a lot of what we deal with is is is, is heavy. I mean, there's there's a, there's a lot that goes on around that series, but I think being able to bring some stuff in to, to show all the positives that are going on as well. We um, used we used to do that. We kind of trimmed down the meetings with during COVID. But I agree, we should bring a lot of that back. Sure. Okay. Uh, Pre-K program. Just want to give you an update um, that we are proceeding with trying to start two classrooms at primary school. Uh, this requires approval from DHS, first of all, and we're awaiting, we've got to do one more thing on the facility application, waiting for approval of our classrooms by DHS. And then we are waiting on, and it's close, they tell me, the family application for those who would qualify under CCDF, Child Care Development Fund, uh, first, and see how many families are interested who would qualify. Uh, two classrooms it's a one basically 20 students in the classroom one to ten a teacher and an instructional assistant um, the CCDF funding generates a, a dollar amount per day uh, they usually go by membership not necessarily attendance because that could get volatile but so much per day and then as you develop as you go through their what's called better beginning certification program through the years as you get higher levels then you get additional funding to implement programs, et cetera, and provide additional supports. Um, so once we get that approval, once we have the family application, we plan to survey families. I've worked with Brandy a little bit on this. We've had some discussions and see what families are interested, which ones are, and let them fill out applications. If we don't fill up all seats, then we could look at options of paying slots and we have to work on that to see how we'd advertise that. Uh, I have a soft commitment for future expansion, if this works, for Arkansas Better Chance, which is a different set of qualifications for those seats. Uh, but it's easier to add Arkansas Better Chance seats if you expand instead of starting with it originally. So that's, that, that's what we were advised to proceed. Uh, so anyway, we, it looks good. We just waiting on approvals and if things get delayed, a pre-K program doesn't necessarily have to start right at the first of a school year. It's more flexible, it's not required. 
Uh, families do not have to be resident families. Anybody can go to any pre-K. Now, transportation is not provided. You can't transport unless you have a five-point restraint system in all your buses to do that. Uh, so families bring them and uh, and uh, sign them in. Part of part of that uh, kind of requirement with pre-K, they want the parents to interact with those young parents to interact with the teachers on a daily basis. And uh, so we'll advise once we know we got our approvals and how we're proceeding. So so far, so good. But you recap two two classes, two classrooms, and how many how many slots are we talking? Would be forty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a one to ten ratio okay. with your teacher and your instructional assistant. So we we have a commitment to start with forty slots. And that's a like a regular licensed certified teacher? Yes, something? certified teacher. And then the instructional assistant. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now I've dealt with pre K for years. Has to have a child development associates or an associate's degree or the sixty hours, or they can go on a training program to get their CDA. So they have to have that training to be assigned and stay once they complete the stay in that program. Okay. Now you mentioned to me when we talked about this mm -hmm. in this week or last week about not a whole lot different, but they would need like a section off playground area. Yes. I'm working on that. Correct. We're yes. working on that's part of the facility approval. Yeah, so that's uh, the two parts I've left. I'm the <coughs> diagram for the two classrooms in the playground and then I'm working on the piece that's more like the day to day, like what we'll do with the students. That's the two pieces I'm finishing right now. Sure. Yeah. We've submitted other items, uh, just kind of just general information and that's the last piece of the application. And uh, the state provides a little bit of startup money. It's not going to be a huge amount of money, but they said even playground we can start small and then just go from there. Mm -hmm. on it. Dr. Wood, I'm assuming like lunch would be part of that, figuring out where right. to go and what right. time so and all that stuff as well, right? right they would still apply for a free reduced lunch or, right. or pay or whatever. That would be the same for those families. There's really not funding that shelters that from CCDF. You talk about a, a great start. I mean, if they've been there and then they were on the kindergarten in the same yeah, school, they've already we'll been there. we'll see huge gains from that. We, we need kids in those. And um, I visited with some of you. I went last October to look at that preschool in Dallas, and that's where Mr. Bullard and Ms. Thomas are today. I sent them down to look at that preschool, and we're going to sit down and start talking about what we think the student classrooms will look like, and I've put some money aside to start getting the startup things for those classrooms. Sure. And the Jeez. requirement is it has to have a safe room. No, no, that's on if you build a new facility. Right, but if we transition it to more because rooms of, here, or yeah, if capacity. if we build a new facility, yes, that is a <coughs> state adopted international building code up revised that requires a safe room, uh, and that drives up the cost. So it, it's yes, Greg Boone could tell us about that. <laughs> is would you reach a point though if if in two to four years, if you, I mean, you're going to max out at some point of how many kids are available in the area to sure. get to. So once you figure out what that number is, is there room to be added on at the primary school to... That's possible. To, you know, to, we had... If it works out there. Right. And then right. they're familiar with the building. Sure. From one year that is an option. Yeah. That is an option. I know originally, I guess, you know, a few years ago discussing all the construction that a you know a pre-k center mm -hmm. a lot of places do that but a lot of places also just have a wing or a few <clears throat> classrooms in an elementary school to do that too mm -hmm. so that is a that's an option as well sure is there any sort of potential study or districts similar to us in Arkansas similar in size that would give us an idea of how large the program would need to be or how large we think it could be well, and a lot of that depends. My former district, we had 300 seats. Um, it depends on a lot of it. It's a lot of it's income based. A lot of it is based on certain of some of those seats on that risk factors. You know, the goal is the state to give families who don't have access to quality pre-K access to quality pre-K and use state resources to help them. Uh, CCDF requires a. Uh, uh, either a work requirement or they're in school or they're in job training but yeah I could get some numbers from the state director and they might that I know they will say it's going to be dependent on your population right. within your system as well um, but we could get generally what those sizes are and I, I think I mentioned to you offline that you know, I, I feel like even paid seats in, in Alma would be wildly popular among sure parents. and I've had that too I've had many parents that take 
take your kids right. to Van Buren Enforcement to, yes, to well, provide more opportunities. Talk about enrollment. <coughs> it's not specific to just our kids. So if we had other kids who started here, typically sure. they start at preschool, they want to stay. You know, they get familiar. The parents get familiar. They want to stay. stay. And so that's a bonus sure. too. And I think keeping it at the primary school plays into that. Where are we? Just talking about the safe room. Where are we capacity wise with safe room? Like how much could you grow pre K and primary and okay. you, before you had some yeah, capacity? I have to look at that because there's gosh how much it's so many square. Because I've seen all those kids in the safe room. <laughs> Yeah. There's not just a whole lot of room. There, I'd have to ask Craig. I, I forget. There is so much square foot per person. For of course, if you build a new one, so I don't know how the other facilities are grandfathered in, quote unquote, yeah. on that. Because I, I think that's a great idea, but I just. But yeah, if we're, we're, if we're I mean, right. there's a lot of kids in that room now. Because if there's not room, then yes, we'd have to build on either a second safe room or try to expand that. That one's not going. That won't be easy to expand a safe room. Better off stick another one right beside it. Building a new one, yeah. <laughs> beside it. Sounds like a great program. So I'm not advocating for this being a decision factor, but is this are we gonna make profit off this? Your goal is to break even. And I did some rough numbers based on the lowest level of funding over the summer when of course the grand plan was can we build a facility for two hundred kids, you know, or you just look at it per classroom and if that's consistent. Now if that's as that this is if every seat is filled with the funding that comes from the state, then you pretty much with two teachers, two assistants, custodial costs, uh, a couple other things, then you pretty much will break even. The only reason I ask, we have had some uh, obviously some public comment about uh, being more business like. Most businesses would dri be more driven by profit based decisions, sure. right? This doesn't seem like a profit based I mean, decision, we definitely. If that's a driving factor, then you know, right. You most pre-Ks, there's always some money the district has to subsidize. Um, I've inherited those before. And then what you try to do is operate within the means of the grant. And it takes some time, but if you start off that way, we operate within the means that's given to us, then we're not going to have to worry about subsidizing the program. Is that how we operate the rest of the school system? On is that, is, is we're trying to break even? I mean, we're here as a service. Yeah. The, the, uh, only thing we're required to have is you must have, of course, we have pretty close balances, but you're required to have a carryover balance for fiscal integrity. But and the maximum you can carry over is twenty percent of your operating budget. But our and we're nowhere factor, near that. But our driving factor is the support of the community. Sure, sure, service and all that, and we want to make sure we can pay all the bills and we, we must have some balance left to carry over. That's required by law. Sounds like a good point. Okay. Yeah, I wanna just I guess mimic what John was saying. <clears throat> I think we, we talk a lot about a lot of things, but when I think about things that are very impactful to our community, um, I think this is one of those definitely worth fitting out because I, I definitely sure. think there's a, a compelling reason to really look deep into this and because it could service the community well. I agree. I agree. So I'll advise as we have more new information. All right. Uh, I guess the last item on my report, we need to schedule the high school facility visit. This will be the last one for the year uh, to see what dates. You'll probably need to block three hours. We blocked about an hour and a half to two for the others, but you probably need it three to three and a half for the high school. Is that correct, Mr. Kirkendall, probably? Roll out the red five hours. hours. Yes. You cooking steaks, too. Dallas, right? Dallas said yeah. I have tomorrow morning available. Potato board. Yeah. Yep. Um, let me get my calendar up. So, is there any. It seems like dates? we got on a run of Mondays. Does that, for the most part, work out okay? Even though typically Mondays aren't great, but it seemed to work out for everybody's schedule. I'm free Monday the 29th. That's, that's the day I was Because it's a at. five week month, so that helps actually. <laughs> Same. April 29th. Yeah. Check, Check your calendar, Mr. Perkins, no, office to see. Yeah, Although I highly recommend Thanksgiving at, at the high school. It was I've great. Got a, I've got a hearing, but I believe it's a... Uh, but I can do the 30th as well the next day. 30th? The 30th. the 30th is better for me. I can do the 30th. I'm sorry. You can, I can, cannot. You can do the 30th. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I'm actually free the first. First works for us. Anybody have next Friday the 19th for you? I'm gone next Friday. Okay.
I could do the 22nd. So. Come back April, not May. April, April. April. Okay. I cannot do the 22nd. <laughs> So that's what we can either. So unless, or do you want me to send dates by call email and go with her to the Jackson's appointment for work? Yeah. No, maybe we can get it down. You going to do that? I'd rather do that. I can do that. I can do the 24th. 24. The 24th of uh, yeah. April. Yeah. I can do it. It's on Wednesday. I can do that. Oh. Mr. Kirk, how's that? Does that work? April 24th. I'm sorry, I was in May. No. Oh, here we go. So you can do it. Let's do it by email. I mean, just so because okay. I know y'all are looking at y'all's. Mine's not updating. Okay. So, so I can send, send us some emails. Send yeah. possibilities by email. Okay. It's, it's hard to get this many people. And then we'll go from there. Okay. It's a Sounds good. I mean, morning, morning for lunch. Or what morning. would, what's, is it? What's what's yeah. better for everyone? Would morning That's be better? Let's look at like we've done before. Yeah, I was gonna say, what's the menu? <laughs> what's the menu exactly. in the studio, and that may drive what day we do. Chicken, chicken fried steak. Just tell me what you want. We'll go work it out. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say just call it over. Free chili pie. I mean, as long as you got cinnamon rolls, you can do the rest right. of the week. All right, cinnamon rolls. Okay, I'll send emails some possibilities. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. That concludes the superintendent's report. Next up, we've got new business. First item, school improvement plans. Yes, you receive these electronically, and these are required uh, to be uploaded to the state for their approval, so I recommend approval of those plans. Second. Any discussion? I just had a, a thought on like the formatting. I mean, each, each school, the formatting looks a little different. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just curious. Template, no template, everybody kind of comes up. Like what that? There's not. I think we're going to see changes next year. We're actually wanting them, they're wanting, the state's wanting to make that app where everybody is much more the same. Yeah. And so I've kind of just let them float for now, but yeah. I think we'll see. Because it's uploaded in a portal, that but yes. then. Yeah, right, right now we've been in a portal that I really feel is probably going to change, so I hate to have them change them. I don't love the format of them right now, but yeah. um, next year I think they'll be different. And Dr. Wood, at what level are you in? Involved. Like, do they give you, do y'all get first draft after it comes over? They send and then to me, and right. then we work together based mm -hmm. on the data for that school year from the growth from last year or the decline from last year, and we set goals based on that data, and then we check the next year to, to evaluate if we had improvement or not. So. Right. Any other discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, Audit for FY23, you did receive this as well, and uh, there were uh, no material weaknesses and no significant deficiencies, so uh, uh, it is required that you review that, and I recommend approval of the audit report. Move to approve the audit. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passes. Okay. Next up, we've got salary schedules. Yes, this is on page 33. This is all the classified salary schedules. Uh, we're still working on certified schedule with PPC, uh, and no changes on these. We may have a couple other things to present separately even on these uh, for next year, but I recommend approval as presented. Have you already sent that out? Has there been any discussion, feedback on it? Because, you know, like with the classified... I've sent it to PPC. They they get feedback and all. And uh, the feedback's been positive for that? Yeah, there's, there's really not been much, if any. You know, typically there's not. The classified was sent to PPC? Yes. Okay. Yes. Make sure I understood this. Yes, PPC gets to review those. Okay. Right. Do they have a representative on PPC on the committee? No one has stepped up to do that. So the, the one PPC is representing both uh, staffs. I move to approve. We got a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And next up, I've got recommendations on employment. Yes, and I'm, I'm uh, asking for an executive session. All right, so we'll do an executive session, 704 for employment.
We can just you know, he's absent from a return from executive session. All right, we need to we're good. All right, eight thirty one back in regular session. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed. Most carries. Meeting adjourned. Get two signatures. On the